there's all kinds of different ways and every individual is so different so the process is is pretty much the same but the starting point can look very different with with anyone we could be going from past lives we could be going to maybe a disease within their body that's been manifesting there could be an entity in the person's body that's disrupting um, the flow of chi and their lives and what's going on so each time we are shifting and moving the energies it is releasing a veil upon veil so that the light can be brought back into their eyes and then they get to see more clearly and understand the programs that they've been so wired and so connected to that hasn't been serving them. Welcome to the Consciousness of the Way. I am your humble servant and Sifu, Taoist Master Sun Ching. And it's... Yeah, I'm not sick of it. Yeah, it's Christmas morning again. I come down to the tree, and the universe has brought me this incredible being. I want to welcome to the podcast today, Tiffany, a direct channel for Maitreya, an incredible essence, uh, an expression of what I perceive as a divine feminine. I want to welcome mm -hmm. you to the podcast, my dear friend. Thank you for sharing your time with us today. Oh, thank you so much, Dan. Thank you for inviting me on. Well, it's uh, it's truly a gift when we can have these incredible sacred conversations and embody what it is that we're transmitting, what we're um, putting out into the oneness or an expression of that consciousness by just being. So I would love you to start with uh, the podcast today with a, just a little insight for the audience, a little bit about you and how you got to this point. Uh, wonderful, Sam. Absolutely. So I would say my first interaction with understanding the body and energy, all that we are, as Maitreya says, and everything that we ever will be, would be my background in martial arts. Mm -hmm. From five years old, I started Taekwondo, which took me around the world, fighting, competing, moving the body a lot, and also meeting my master, a South Korean beautiful energy who's not with us now, unfortunately, but he was very tuned in to consciousness, to who we are, and showing us the way, the truth. So I was very fortunate at a young age to meet him, who was also a master of Qigong. And I was learning energetics from him and understanding the energy body, and also just being able to have a conversation that at that point in time, was quite or less spoken about less less common so it allowed me to express what i experienced as a little girl and seeing spirits and connecting to those places and not feeling so alone yeah it's it's so interesting um when you get to resonate with what it is that is your truth. It's a visceral embodiment that's a reflection of uh, the spirit, the energy, mm. the frequency. And, you know, it comes in all forms. We all have our own sort of uh, epiphany and insight into this journey that brings us to the now. Um, mm. You know, I think today, contemporary, in a contemporary setting, you know, I started channeling my teacher, Latsu, 30 years ago and has wow. been, I've been in direct communication with him ever since on a second mm -hmm. by second basis. He's, he's my teacher, as are the three pure ones who are the keepers of the cosmos uh, within Taoism. 
and basically the direct uh, message of the mother, the mother of all. Mm. So this, yeah, it, it's it's really really profound when you find your attunement and you recognize, um, and I'd identify with where you are right now on that spectrum. So what was the defining moment for you having had this incredible insight, this amazing teacher giving you insight into this sort of energetic potential? Mm -hmm. What that meant from, from, a, from that standpoint, from an Eastern mm -hmm. position to how you acquired your deeper understanding with your relationship now with uh, mm -hmm. Freya? Yes, I would say the defining moment was when I was living in South Korea at the time and all of my training in martial arts was had taken me so far that I was preparing for the London 2012 Olympics. Mm. And, as I, and as I had um, completed this scholarship to train with the South Koreans, I suffered an injury that would completely change the course. And I still, even as I speak about it, I still feel emotional because everything that a little girl had been trained and thought she was going to do, the, the path completely went the other way. And what unfolded was a depression, an isolation, a loneliness. Everything that I thought I was going to do, the direction completely shifted and I didn't know how to manage that. I didn't know what that was. And everything that I was experiencing mentally, emotionally, like, and why? Why can I not compete? Why can I not get to where I thought I was going to go? That was the defining moment because for maybe a year or two years, I was in this deep sadness. But it was in that sadness that I returned to my meditation and I returned to the connection to my Treya, who was in my room when I was a little girl. But because at that time, my mother would tell me, there's nothing there, don't be silly. And when I was in school, it was never spoken about because all of these connections to the metaphysical, it wasn't true It's a figment of the imagination. And that moment, despite the upsets and the unwantedness of what unfolded, I would never change what unfolded for me because it reconnected me to my Treya and I immediately saw and felt and was just catapulted into this divine cosmic space of consciousness that just filled my heart with this unconditional love that words like words I can't even find the words to describe what it brought to me for me and allowed me to do as that reconnection took place forever grateful for the challenges that I faced and what I went through wow it seems to be the disposition, the human condition for anyone who's on a journey would start with this, this transmuted emotional state that would seem, you know, never ending, this bottomless pit, depression. Within Taoism, when I have people come to me, it's oppression, depression, per, yeah, you, you know where it goes. Again, mm, yeah. Um, there's an intersection of of a conscious and unconscious process and realizing what it is, what's really going on, where am I discerning or affirming the the information? So mm -hmm. where was a clear pathway? And so when she came to you, can I address her as she? Yes, absolutely. Yes. When when she came to you and it was very clear, this sort of visceral 
um, expression that becomes very evident as we're experiencing now any of my students or OGs of the 126 or the channel itself can feel the presence of her right now. It's mm -hmm. more of a Dantian expansive sort of thing from a Taoist perspective. That means, uh, you know, uh, so w when we're looking at Upper Dantian, it means the energy elixir field, which is the major energy centers, which you may call them chakras. I'm not sure. It's that's yeah. more within a, a Hindu sort of processes. Yes, but, I'm familiar with the Dantian. Yeah, yeah. As you probably are coming from the Eastern uh, uh, training, Taekwondo, and, and a very much yeah. a system of understanding this this deeper nature of, of energetics. Um, so, yeah, so what was the, how do you use your relationship with her now to mm. help guide themselves and, and find a clear understanding of the nature of reality? Yeah. So our relationship in terms of the healing work that we're doing, we have... One way is a transmission where we bring through messages for the collective consciousness. And what that does is that those who tune in and listen to the messages, more often than not, they will find themselves resonating with what is coming through, what's happening on a global level, but also at an individual level. So we bring through a collective message to let people know that they're not alone and to also give them support, encouragement and a healing energy as they listen to the transmission. So that's one way. And the second way is the channeling, the one to one. And what that session involves is a direct communication with someone's body. So as Maitreya comes through me, speaks through me, we are able to scan your entire physical body, mm -hmm. your inner landscape, your energy field. Yes, burping. <laughs> I should have I should have said at the beginning of the podcast and that when I have these um these conversations the host or whoever I'm speaking to they will likely find themselves burping which is um just a releasing of energy so um yeah that's one of the symptoms of communicating with us um but yeah so a scanning of the entire energy field and we will bring through not only a message of what you need to hear right now of what's going on in your body and what your body is trying to communicate with you but we will bring through and identify the exact root of any issues or challenges that you are going through and um yeah i think it's it's what makes the work so powerful, so healing and felt from the person that's experiencing a channeling session with us. Because so often, so many parts of ourselves aren't always felt by us. You know, and there's so many parts of ourselves that need attention. It needs love. It needs vital chi. And a lot of it ends up, you know, in a kind of sleep state. Unwanted, unheard, unseen. So our work is to bring light through truth and through communicating with you what's going on without any filters. We don't edit any of the words that come through from Maitreya or from your guides if they decide to come in to have that conversation with us. Mm. Yeah, it, it's, 
it's an interesting um when you transmute from a dialogue to a monologue right and and i think a lot of people have this sort of all my teachers are are really dialogues of the same pure essence of mutation mm. of all things so yes. Taoism, consciousness is the diamond perfection manifest mm -hmm. each facet is just another viewpoint of consciousness and that's why we reflect on that within the magical register we call the Tao Te Ching and um, I just finished transcribing that with uh, Latsu for the 2024 version I just published it about a week ago and that's our mm -hmm. magical register cool. that's an incantation each verse is an incantation with 81 levels and frequencies and colors that go with that that are representative of you know the the now the present moment mm -hmm. beautiful and i really love the 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 way you express the the relationship that you have with mantraya and then the 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 relationship that is embodied for the transmission for mm -hmm. the seeker that you're you're uh, showing a a path or a, a mm -hmm. answer to what it is that they're looking for um does it come more in a physical mental emotional fit spiritual how is it sort of being represented um in would you call it a session a healing how do you define that yeah, so we define it as a one-to-one -one channeling session. And we normally carry out the session for about 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it's a direct communication with myself and my trail for 40 minutes. And in that session, yeah, we will go through everything that your body is communicating with us. And as soon as we connect, as soon as you hop online with us, it comes through so quickly. Within seconds, my trailer comes through and all you have to do is just simply relax and just listen to the guidance that comes through. Yeah. So, um, would you say from that from that transmuted sort of state, what would be the the reason I ask you this is I, I've been on this journey consciously probably for about as a Taoist priest for thirty years, and um, it's it's interesting because I've had the very foundations, uh, the fortified foundations of all the ancient rituals that are handed down to me by my lineage, mm -hmm. and then. I have the inner guidance of all my teachers, the three pure ones, the Yellow Emperor, Jade Emperor, Latsu. And Beautiful. So, yeah, Beautiful. It, it really, it, it really in, it, it, you know, makes it very robust. But I say this because as you understand more of the energetic properties and the profiles of what everything is, energy, frequency, vibration, lowest point of transmutation would be a physical mm. manifestation, right? So if someone got to a physical manifestation, they've been hoarding these emotional states, which are really a distraction. My dear friend Martin, a Buddhist monk, would call the dukkha, the distortion. Yes. And um, I imagine you're embodying some of these Eastern uh, principles with your relationship. Talking about the emotional stuff, it's really... It, it, it's problematic for the seeker, yet it's very infantile when you understand how to heal from that. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. move it aside and you, you move forward in your path as a seeker. That's that's my observation. That's what I sort of teach people with the stuff that I know. So the physical stuff is an interesting one. I've been witnessing that type of stuff for well over 30 years, and it all mm -hmm. started with... Uh, you know, watching gangrious flesh transmute back to its original pink state in 40 minutes. That was the banger of bangers, the first event I ever saw. And it's a daily. So I've seen it all. If you give me a list of miracles, I could guarantee you I've seen it. Bone fuse, tumors disappear, cancer, blood work instantly. 
And so mm-hmm. this is the kind of stuff that we get into. And I mean, I imagine with the resonance that I'm experiencing that you're altering, as it should be, a a, 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 at a spirit level, the highest mm-hmm. level to the state of basically being within Taoism between the Wuji and the, which is the stillness. So is mm-hmm. that where you guys go first or? Yeah, absolutely. There's a transmutation. So we're working with the lower fields or the lower resonances within a person and what's happening in that energy field. And as you mentioned, that then is creating the physical manifestation that they that they aren't desiring. So we also have to be very careful in this process of moving the energy for an individual so that they can manage it within them um, and that they can actually hold the new frequencies once we move and start shifting the noises, as we call it. And you mentioned distractions. And -hmm. when we start filtering those things out, then the more of their true selves, the more of their hearts and their spirit can start illuminating. So... There's all kinds of different ways and every individual is so different. Though the process is is pretty much the same, but the starting point can look very different with, with anyone. We could be going from past lives. We could be going to maybe a disease within their body that's been manifesting. There could be an entity in the person's body that's disrupting. Um, the flow of chi and their lives and what's going on. So each time we are shifting and moving the energies, it is releasing a veil upon veil so that the light can be brought back into their eyes and then they get to see more clearly and understand the programs that they've been so wired and so connected to that hasn't been serving them Mm -hmm. so it is it is quite a process but um it is definitely one that we that we take with um with a lightness and with a devotion for every individual that comes our way right yeah yeah i mean um is there a is so with a transmission you you start the session it's evident the resonance the presence of Maitreya um, you know um, the is it more just as you I guess as you describe step out of the way and um, allow the intelligence of these energies to to percolate cultivate oscillate what it needs to to create a a a, a resonant harmony yes but, um, absolutely yeah i would say that i am fully present but i am in the background so almost i am like holding the fort mm-hmm. and ensuring that whoever we are working with feels safe mm-hmm. they feel comfortable so I'm kind of just watching. And then as my Maitreya comes through, I just allow her to do her thing. And, um, yeah, just move move through what needs to be done in that session for that individual. Mm-hmm. What, uh, what sort of practices would you offer someone, the seeker, the... the um, recipient of one of these Mm -hmm. transformations what are the sort of practices that would you offer them to maintain this sort of like synchronicity um Mm -hmm. because there there, there is there should be some level of accountability for the individual seekers consciousness uh, yeah absolutely spiritual consciousness you know as you said you know um you know i'm always a not hesitant, but when I give someone a healing or cast magic or things of that nature, 
there has to be a clear path of realization for for the recipient yeah. um, so that it can blossom into a regulated resonance that is self-evident yeah. right yeah yeah i was just coming off the back of a session yesterday it just reminded me and i do a follow-up after every session to ensure that the individual and whoever we channeled for you know how they're feeling the following day and it's also important for us in terms of practice and for, for everyone that comes through for a session everyone gets like a tailor-made practice to go away with that they can just it's almost like on repeat a little bit like riding a bicycle they just keep riding keep pedaling and just keep trying to steer and just trying to find that balance so we never want to overwhelm anyone with too much. We just want them to take one practice that Maitreya feels is most suitable for whichever parts of the body requires healing most, needs attention most, needs love most. And from that place, they will go away and they will do that energy practice that we have given them. And it can look anything like um, it could be a meditative practice it could be a movement meditation mm -hmm. where we get them to maybe move parts of their body to enhance the energy to connect with the chi and to understand and start feeling what that looks like for themselves to enhance their sensitivities so that they can start becoming um so that they can start feeling like they can manage on their own. Start so that they can start becoming independent and feeling their strengths again. So all of the practices that we recommend all stem on, stem from a place of stillness within. Yeah. Every, everything that we guide and that we recommend and we get um, clients to do or any of the members to do. It's all from this place of understanding and feeling into stillness. And you probably know very well, San, like stillness itself, like that place can just go on and on and on and on and it can take you down all these multiple places and the longer you stay in it and the longer that you can hold it it starts not only communicating with you but it starts showing you so much you need not look outside anymore because just allowing yourself to just starting if any of your um, viewers are listening a great starting point is just just for a few minutes just see if you can just sit nothing strenuous nothing intense nothing over complicated but just see if you can just relax your body and just sit. Notice if you can just be with yourself for a few moments. Notice your hands, your physical body. And maybe after a few moments, you might notice the rise and fall of your breath and how that supports you in every moment notice your heart and you might even start noticing all of the organs the skeletal system everything that moves through you what your body does for you and the longer you stay you might start feeling some appreciation Maybe a deep sense of thanks, of reverence. 
for yourself, who you are. And again, if I stay a bit longer, <laughs> it just keeps going, it keeps going, it keeps going. And just that in itself, it can bring someone from a, a lower vibrational place, whether you whether that person is going through a deep challenge in their lives, they're facing something unbearable, or maybe they're just sad and lonely, isolated. Whatever it might be, just a few moments just doing that, it can start transcending. It can just start shifting. Yeah, the now. <laughs> right. yeah. For for Taoists, it's between the breath in and the breath out, the stillness. I felt I yeah. felt that you were really with me then. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just the thing is, is transmuting that. From from me, I I teach people nidan, internal alchemy, nigong, internal power, mm -hmm. and that system is repeatable. That means separating electric from magnetic and and really dipping into that magnetic fluidity that is the true essence of the mother of all things, the mm -hmm. Tao. And so that center point is critical, is what you're you're taking people to. It's making it repeatable for the user, which I'm very much in a self-evident sort of uh, replicable, repeatable processes that has to be generated taking yourself into a basically transmuting the 3d reality as we're four density beings right so you cannot see a 3d if you're you, you're not in the fourth dimension already and that mm. is actually from a, a quantum model which is a new language that i'm not really 100 percent sold on and it's sort of problematic in many senses of the word more ancient is the you know the chinese landscape that i'm familiar with that goes back tens hundreds of thousands of years not on the book learned stuff that people tend to it's like a dogmatic sort of propaganda that they punch out that only dates back to 6000 bc within pictographs and and oracle bone reading which when i speak in in deep concert with my teacher yellow emperor who's the Basically, the origins of Chinese landscape, as you know, it started with the conception of his 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 communication or whisper of the universe that mm -hmm. laid him on the ground of the earth for eighteen days and nights, magnified to the ground, downloading every single piece of information that is Chinese culture as you know it today. And so, I love the way that you are bringing people to that resonance so for the audience everything is energy energy is created from light wave particle matter it's all transmuted from your attention intention and you take that and that energy has a vibration that vibration has a frequency that frequency if held as you mentioned previously five minutes ago holding that resonance is the key mm -hmm. And so if you can hold that resonance as we experienced uh, Tiffany uh, transcending that as a, as a resonance, there was a tone to that within, uh, you know, Taoism, just all different octaves of, of the light spectrum. And then. The yeah, that's beautiful. I love that. Right. Different it's octaves with the light spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. So when you, do that you, you there's a sound there's a frequency there's a color and then there's an absolute state that you're in that goes beyond this electromagnetic spectrum beyond what people consider you know the duality that we are experiencing and this is where you know um you know as we always say the jade emperor one of my teachers Everything is like the, the mother is a bellows. It contracts and expands. That is the mm -hmm. essence of all things. The universe is the mother. Man is not like that. When he contracts and expands, he becomes exhausted. So to understand that when you know 
you're not of this body, what can harm you? Mm. Now you have a true like realization of what mm. is looking back at you in the mirror. This flesh and blood is not your identity, but an anchor to this reality and is a facet because consciousness is all things. Oh, yes. And Tiffany gets that. That charge up her spine right now is a realization of that true essence of all things. And it illuminates the very center, the center point. <laughs> Beautiful. Holding on to the, I can feel uh, that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, just, I see it first in your aura and then, it, then I, I feel the visceral effects of it. But the, 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 the middle Dantian that you're holding on to from a Taoist is the earth. And mm. that mutation that has a, a talisman that goes a counterclockwise position of a spiral that has 81 mm. chambers within it. And those 81 chambers are all activated points to all things. And so that is that visceral charge that you're getting right now just in the Dantian and as I shake my hand it gets a little thicker this is our attunement the resonance mm. right now and this is what I love about this stuff is like yeah. it's here the now the present moment and it's yeah. not the same it's whole so mm. in Taoism we have the upper Dantian which is the sun and the element is platinum the earth is basically the middle dantian the element is gold and the lower mm -hmm. dantian is the moon which is the combination of all things and that's the secret source where most people are misdirected they don't get it it's a it's they 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 refer to these as cauldrons and the only cauldron that you cultivate in from an alchemical process is from an eastern philosophy or metaphysical standpoint would be the lower dantian but it's fire it's it is not it is the merging mm -hmm. of these two. And, and that's the misdirection. That's that charge you get right now. It's like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Whoa. <laughs> the charge that you're getting right now is that very essence. Because mm -hmm. this speaks to you. Viscerally, this speaks to you. It is expansive. You have no other choice than to listen to the heart. Listen to mm -hmm. the true keeper, the truth teller of all things which is the now and um, hallelujah to that because it really is profound stuff. And, uh, you know, I've been on this journey, I think consciously probably my whole life, quite frankly, and you, you become more uh, in tune with it as you look back and you have another epiphany. You go, oh, well, I mean, all oh, oh, this whole, and then the thousand lives before this leading up to this, uh, immortalized reincarnation of of myself as a doppelganger in a, a thousand lives before this is just transmuted the highest level of spiritual consciousness as my dear friend james tooney would say and it's like uh i think that's an interesting one tiffany because mm -hmm. people are using this word consciousness and then they're sort of i don't know whether you've noticed this but they're moving into this need to lean on the quantum model. And I use it occasionally. Mm -hmm. I'm moving back from it because it's not ancient. It's quite a, a manipulation of the seeker's state of awareness. And mm -hmm. then like conscious agency, which what mm -hmm. it does is it removes you from the now. It removes you from that state that Tiffany brought us to just a few months ago that we're still in. And for all, all the seekers and all the students that I have, will just be bathing in this like a soupy 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 and it is it's just the Tao and that present month is on another level you transmute it right for me I transmute many things I, I'll open up people's portals within the Taoist practice we have a, a, a system called Taoist rites and mm -hmm. it shoots through all the frequencies there's 81 elements 81 colors 81 frequencies to the keys to all things, the mother. Mm -hmm. When you you can quickly pair and attune these to anything, and it becomes an instantaneous transmutation. Like, mm -hmm. and I think what's really embodying is the the individual's empowerment of returning and remembering who they are. 
which I think is yeah. the pure, the, your, your incredible embodiment and your relationship um, with Ben Trayer is that. Yes. Yeah. Woof. And that child yeah. getting through the middle Dantian, that middle, it's, it's so palpable, expansive, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, you, it's, it's on a, it's, as, as I always remind people, it's not from this spectrum. It's not from this 3D, even though most, most people yes. see the universe as, you know, this contractive, expansive, it is the mother, it is an expression mm -hmm. of the mother, yet it's an altered transmutation because yes. attention and intention creates what you see before you as a materialism within a du duality. So that is being created changing light to wave to matter to particle which then means the frequency is not perfection you're cutting it from the cloth of perfection mm. now you're sort of like living that and attuning yourself to create and return back to remembering who you are the truth of all things yeah yeah, yeah. yes I, I literally came off a recording about an hour ago and all of that which you just said in the last few minutes is um a lot of what we shared in the recording about the journeys remembering remembrance of who you are where you came from and as we do that through truth through the transmission and the words that come through from Maitreya there's a vibration there's a frequency there and as that energy comes and speaks through me, it is there that if the viewer, the listener, whoever's in a session with us, if there is a part of themselves that is just even a, even a little a window opening within themselves, just allows for this vibration, for this frequency to meet them into their bodies, it just opens up so much for that person. And it is that part of being able to start receiving, to know that, yes, the journey back towards the path of the heart, towards the heart, the spirit, all that we are, everything that we ever will be, in that remembering yes receiving and opening the heart like a lotus flower and as you and as you do that more and more then you invite change transformation possibility you can enter into aspects of what we call as fields of unknown where control cannot reside and we enter into the fluidity of the element of water and the more that we trust the more we shared and let go move away from all the noise and all the programs then the more that we can go deeper deeper into the layers of self yes and that yeah. is the birthing. It is speaking and expressing creation. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then you're going to love this one. This is an incantation f directly from Jade Emperor. Mm -hmm. A power abundant in its giving you will receive. Unifying the body with the spirit, the spirit with the energy bringing heaven to earth, transcending all is one, one is all, revealing perfection manifest. That is your gift. That is your offering. That is your gift. That is your offering. That is your gift. That is your offering. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah! Thank you, Stan. Thank, thank you so much. Thank, thank, thank you, you, Tiffany. We we had an embodiment of a a full physical visceral experience that rides on the wave of that 
deeper nature of what ancient intersection of the humanist and perfection accessing the mother returning to who you really are mm -hmm. is in that and that incantation is we've been using that for thousands of years the jade emperor has been using it for thousands of years and it's really quite something how it just embodies all things yeah i don't know if you know san but i'm actually half chinese yes yes but i'm not as i uh, i would never assume anything <laughs> oh, my father is from hong kong i was actually born in hong kong and so your would you would you nurture simplified or traditional chinese at this point um so our tongue is cantonese which is traditional yes traditional yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you know uh i go through my love affair with uh mandarin and all things in between with the characters mm -hmm. and have been for many many years and you know i'm i'm deep back in it and I go back and forth, and and I, I have a love affair with it. I know it's the very core and essence of my communication. Mm -hmm. um, within that Tao Te Ching that I transcribed is the pinyin and uh, the um, simplified uh, Mandarin translation, also with the English. So it's very much you can sing along once you get a a, a sense of the tonality or understand mm -hmm. that they can sing along to. The actual incantation which is embodying it at a whole nother level mm. not audible or inaudible and so you know it's it's like uh you're 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 just reunited and it feels so good mm. you're you're going back to something that's deeper on many lifetimes before and it's having this incredible epiphany mm. for you you're going i have this relationship with a whole nother lineage it's just <laughs> right now it just happens to be right now whoa <laughs> pursued taekwondo because isn't that vietnamese taekwondo i'm not sure uh it's, it's south korean south korean yeah i yeah. Studied taekwondo for a while I oh teach people, wow i teach people um you know tai chi bagua um mm. you know, all sorts of different qigong but i mean qigong is really a contemporary sort of expression of nigong and when you understand that how how to take the qigong which is basically moving energy with your breath and the nigong which is moving energy with your mind you couple those two and the gateways of all things will open for you on a whole nother level have you been back to to hong kong or yeah i visited a few times in my late teens early 20s yeah and your dad just moved i'm assuming you're in england you are in england right uh, i live in spain now you're in spain but you are a, yeah. you're subject to the tonality of the <laughs> yeah. language yeah. <laughs> absolutely yeah i grew up in england yeah yeah, yeah. so what my what mother's you... english okay um and they were of course when i was born they were living in hong kong and after a few years they decided to move back to england and that's where i grew up oh my goodness I, mm -hmm. you, just you, you'll probably gather this but there, there's been a formation of like um nine different like facets of Quan yin that have just sort of transmuted through <sighs> you right now and it's like really interesting. I don't see her that often. Uh, well, an interesting deal, but you can feel that. You know that, and uh, so you can. That's who I work with. Interesting. I mean, there's Be uh, beautiful that you picked up on that fan. Well, it, like that it. warms my heart. I see it transmute. She transmutes through your field. That's how they yeah. say it. it morphs itself. Well, the 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 very spirit that works with you will morph through in your field and it'll be quite evident um but that just all of a sudden she revealed herself now i i have a very interesting relationship with kuan yin as one of my teachers within my my lineage and uh, her relationship with the nine levels of the 
of of the goddess of heaven, which is a whole other thing. I mean, we have many many different teachers, but they all come from the same source. I like using the dialogue. Maybe it's my affinity with um, you know art and the formation of that transmuted state. So on the front page of the Tao Te Ching that we just transcribed is the sacred infinite flower that we use within Taoism. Mm. Really deep center point. The real realized point of the nine as the highest point of realization uh, reverts back to our intersection, deeper knowledge of where the source of all things come from. So we use this Ryu or Ru Yi, which is a, a scepter. That's the name of my cat. Ah, <laughs> that scepter has a a formation with on the on the head of the scepter is the uterus, which we use to access the mother of all things. Mm. So this is on a whole nother level. A lot of people don't understand when yeah, when when we talk it's about going deep, I can yeah, oh yeah, you're 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 getting it. It's like hang on a second, I, I think I'm pursuing several relationships. <laughs> More and more today is going to be the next turning point of my next realization. <laughs> uh, yeah, that charge, that visceral chill throughout your whole physical body. Mm. Realization for that. And you know, yeah. Juan Yin is so beautiful. She's she really um focuses on the maternal um uh fertile aspect of mm. our nourishment of the universe and her relationship with the mother, and then of course directing um, the four heavenly kings that are the keepers of the four directions, which then echo and ripple out into the 81 directions, which is uh, accessing the 81 elements. And we can go on from here. Yes. On That's and on. beautiful that she revealed herself to you. Well, yeah, you know, I guess you're, you're, you're holding back a little something, something there, Tiffany. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but no, I've never seen her in in nine, like, like nine transmuted forms at once. Mm -hmm. Normally, she'll hold hold a, a presence in one form. That nine is, woo, we're on a whole nother level, my dear friend. Um, mm -hmm. And so she works really closely with you, I imagine. Yes, she does. Mm. Wow. Well, you got that, you know. I mean, as you probably already know, you've you've you have embodied her very energy as yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you are just another a, a reincarnation of yourself, and so now embodying that and, and taking that for a second, take a deep breath. Whoa, holy moly! You're on it. Yeah, yeah. That. Uh, you know, you've got you've got uh, many relationships. How much you 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 use that one as a direct source is a whole nother thing. And it's interesting because she can you work in concert with uh, Maitreya. So yes, she does. That's really yes. Profound. And I, I what I love too is the revealing of the red ruby, which is the pure source um, jewel for the center point within Taoist mm -hmm. practices. So that's revealed within the gold, within the earth center. And so mm -hmm. ruby, the red ruby is, whew, that has a relationship with the jade purity, jade emperor, and then of course now Kuan Yin, which um, my goodness, nine rubies. Ooh, whew, whew, whew. I got goosebumps. Yeah, 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 because, it, and this is a thing that I think you and I really want to, I, I remind people of, and perhaps you do the same, where this is where you get your truth. In reading books or listening to people, you're, you will, mm -hmm. your body will speak to you. The charge yeah. you got right now, we're getting the charge right now because yeah. it's the truth. It's yeah. not some gobbledygook and, and, and someone <laughs> trying something, you're in something or you will immediately know whether you're contracting or expanding, which is the essence of yeah. the mother. And this is a reflection of the, the construct of the universe, which is contracting and expanding. It's a, And it, when you step away from 
identifying as this humanist, you will be eternal, abundant, timeless, endless, limitless, infinite. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, immortality for a Taoist is the, the seeker's cultivational practices. Yeah. yeah. They can't be hidden. No, no. And so that can be reflected. Rem remember within that incantation, we said embodying the spirit with the energy, the energy. And so all of that with the body, all of that is part of realizing the mirroring effects of the contraction and expansion of the universe using those pol polarities. And then you step past that. Between that is the center point that Tiffany and I speak of, that, that Tiffany is mm -hmm. which is the stillness, which is the Wu Ji, which is the mother, the Tao, perfection. And mm -hmm. so that is where you get it. That's where that you find it. It's between. It's mm -hmm. not you know, people get caught up in electromagnetic components. Mm -hmm. That's just the foundation of the universe. The universe is an expression of the Tao. The Tao is perfection, the mother, but that is the sheet that the universe is cut out of. Yeah. Now you've got to, you know, find your way, find mm -hmm. access, a facilitator, Tiffany or myself, to get that essence and repeat it, resonate with it. Because yeah. it's so easy, it's it's easy because that's the state that we reside in. That's it. The resonance is there. You express it. You feel it because that is the the what most people consider the ninety nine percent of the uh, the ele uh, electromagnetic spectrum that you cannot potentially see, which you can see because I teach people how to see it. It's absolutely possible. It's very present, and you know, don't ever be limited by someone coming from biology, neurology. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. You know, Scientology, but hey, whatever. Hey, but you know, this is <laughs> you know, you get a lot of people that they've got their perception, and they're like, oh, that's you know, what I call you know, a little problematic when someone comes to you with a absolute. When you have an absolute truth potentially run in the opposite direction or have a very healthy conversation about what what brings them to this absolute truth. Yeah. The, the, the old expression, can't we all just get along? Because there's a million ways up the mountain. Yeah. There is no right or way, wrong way up the mountain. And the second that someone dismisses someone else's belief system, you dismiss your own. Absolutely. I can see that entire structure there as you were speaking. It becomes quite fixed and rigid. Right, right, you know, and I mean, your relationship with all your teachers and embodying that and expressing that as a catalyst of conduit for the very moment when you share that with the seeker that that finds you because there are no coincidences. Mm. Mm. So yeah. it's laid out. You, fa you, you found me, Sam, and then I was able to find you. Right, right. You know, I mean, Beautiful. people always ask me, well, how did you find me? And well, what did you, I, I follow my teachers. So my mm. teachers go, invite this beautiful, incredible being on the podcast yeah. that needs to be expressed within our path of helping people find the spirit. Mm. Of I've really enjoyed this conversation. So have I, my dear friend. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. We are reunited again, once again, from past lives. What a coincidence. Yeah. And it's so, it's so whole. It's so perfect. It's perfection. It's just now, which is beautiful. So I'm going to leave all your social media under this podcast. I want people to go out. I want my students, mm -hmm. uh, is the subscribers to go to and find you and, and explore all mm -hmm. your book a session. Do you just offer one-on-one -on -one sessions or do you have like training systems or what do you, what, what do you want to offer the audience today? Yeah. I mean, you can head to my YouTube channel where myself and my trail, we run weekly energy transmissions. 
as well as a new series that we just launched, which is called Unashamed, where we, um, yeah, we, we sit down mm -hmm. and we share a full recorded channeling session, exactly what it looks like. It's, it hasn't been edited and you can see it all the full session. We sit down with a guest um, and we um, sh yeah, share that every Friday. And we've also got a session every Wednesday, which is called AMA Wednesday, Ask My Try Anything. And you can simply join us during that session, pop a question in the comments, and in real time, we will answer that for you. My trail will come through, we'll tune into your energy field, and we will answer the question. So we have that. And you can head to the website and book a one-to-one -one channeling session with us. I absolutely love it, my dear friends. I'm so excited mm -hmm. to share this conversation with the world. What I do want to close this incredible conversation out with, one last question. What is your definition of spiritual consciousness? Oh. <laughs> um, I think without thinking too much about it, and the word has come up a few times during our conversation together, I would say it's the complete embodiment of the divine mother and father. Beautiful. Beautiful. I've never heard yeah. one, I've never heard a, a, the same answer as it shouldn't be because we all have our own way up the mountain and that is absolutely perfection. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having me, Sam. I just clocked the time and I was like, it's been an hour. I thought it's been 10 minutes. I know. I mean, trust me, I am very mindful of your time because personally, uh, uh, my marathon podcast, uh, the longest one is seven and a half hours. So I'm very mindful. Wow. <laughs> you see, that's where there's the, you know, man is not a bellows. You see, the yeah. universe is. But you have to tap into that. And most healers do not get that. And that's mm. what that because they, they they sell their life force, right? Mm. Uh, workers, massage therapists, Chinese medicine, psychologists, psychiatrists, mm. uh, you know, um, doctors, medical doctors, you name it, they end up on my doorstep because they sell their essence. Mm. Like, when you end a day and you're exhausted, you're already selling the very yeah. essence of who you really are. Mm. That's, un that's unnecessary when you truly embody that. So within a Taoist perspective, we cultivate the energy, saturate the physical body, take charge of the 50 trillion cells, become the maestro of all things, and you you commandeer the 0 0.07 millivolts of electricity in every cell. Oh, yeah, mm. you're off to the races. And uh, you should never, if you, you are in any way exhausted or tired pause for a minute and and mm. start sort of start unraveling what it is that brought you to this very point whether it's your perception whether it's an interaction whether it's your environment whether it's the psyche whether it's the intelligence whether it's the intuitive determine what that is take a moment yeah. and realize yeah <sighs> lovely Mm -hmm. I want to thank you, my dear friend. I'm very grateful uh, to reunite our bond and our relationship from many lifetimes before, and it starts today. So uh, consciously in this lifetime, I'm very grateful, and I look forward to the future. Mm, thank you so much, Van. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank, thank you. you. I want to thank you. I want to thank the universe for bringing you into my life. I want to thank mm -hmm. the audience for sharing their time with us today. And I am your humble servant and Sifu, Taoist Master Sun Ching, and I will see you on the next one.